What's up my stat stars? In this video, I'm gonna be walking you through how to do a chi-square test for homogeneity or independence. Now, the two different tests are performed exactly the same, but it's really about what the question's asking and how the samples are organized. But in this video, I'm gonna be doing a test for homogeneity, but if you did have a test for independence, what I'm gonna show you to do on the TID4 calculator is exactly the same. So here's the question. Three different random samples were taken. I'm actually stopped right there. That's why this is a test for homogeneity because there's more than one sample. An independence test is when there's one sample and you look at two different things from that sample. But here we're looking at three different samples, one from middle school students, one from high school students, and one from college students. And we were asked what social media app they prefer. Here are the results. Now, does the data show significant evidence that the proportion of favorite social media app is different across the three groups? And again, that's another reason why this is a test for homogeneity, because we're trying to see if there's a difference between the three preferences or if it's the same. And we want to conduct a test at the 1% level. All right, so I really want to show you in this video is how the calculator is going to get the chi-squared value and the p-value for us really, really quickly. But I also want to run through all four steps. So step one are the hypotheses. The null is that there's no difference in the distribution of social media preferences across the three populations of middle school students, high school students, and college students. It's all the same, it doesn't matter. And the alternative is what we're wondering, what our claim is, that there is a difference in the distribution of social media preferences across the three populations. Now the second step is checking those conditions. Each sample has to be random to avoid bias. Because we are sampling from populations, we, need, we do need to make sure our sample size is less than 10% of the population from which it was drawn. And we also have to make sure that we have five or more expected counts in each category. Now we can't figure out that condition until we go ahead and actually get our expected counts. Now how do we do that in a two-way table? Well, it's tedious, but easy. So for example, to get middle schoolers who prefer Facebook, we take the row total, 150, times the column total, 80, divided by the grand total, 570. That's how I got the 21.05. And unfortunately, we have to repeat this self. We have to repeat this process many times. So again, for high school Instagram right here, we're going to do row total times column total divided by grand total. And you just have to repeat that nine times in this specific problem, but that's how I got all those expected values. Now you cannot perform the chi-square test without those expected values, so please make sure you take the time to get them. So in the original table, these were the observed counts that we saw, and we want to know, you know, do these observed counts show that there is a difference in the social media preferences? And here are the expected counts on the assumption that, well, there is no difference. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is the fun start. And this is where the calculator is gonna do all the work for us, and that's to actually get our chi-squared statistic and our corresponding p-value. Now, we need the observed counts, we need the expected counts. Now, here's me showing all of that tedious work. So, for example, middle school who prefer Facebook, observed, minus expected, divide, uh, squared, excuse me, divided by the expected. That's what I'm doing right here. But again, that takes a lot of time to type into your calculator over and over and over again to get that chi-squared total of 12.589. I'm about to show you how we can get that and the p-value really easy on the calculator. All right, what we have to do is set up matrices. So we're gonna hit second matrix, which is down here on the left-hand side, and we're gonna go into edit, because edit is how we actually change them, and we're gonna go to matrix A. Whoop, I hit the wrong thing there. So sec uh, second matrix, slide over to edit, then hit enter on matrix A. All right, first off, make it a three by three. That's because we have three variables for the different ages or different groups, and then three different things here. We do not put the totals in the matrix. We just put the observed counts for each of those categories, middle school, Facebook, high school, Instagram, and so forth down the line. So that's why we only need a three by three matrix. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is in matrix A, I'm gonna put those observed counts. That's the 12, the 108, the 30, the 24, the 130, the 46, the 44, the 132, and the 44. You're literally making a table in the matrix just like we see in our two-way table. All right, once you're done entering all those in and take your time to do that, triple check that you got them all in there, right? Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go back to second matrix. Slide back over to edit, and this time we're going to go into matrix B. Make that another three by three, and this time we're going to put all those expected values. Again, those are all the expected values that we found in this table right here. So again, take your time typing in all those values, especially now that we have decimals. I always tell kids at least two decimal places. If you want to keep more, not a huge deal. What we don't want to do is round to a whole number. So again, 
two decimals or three is totally fine. All right, once you're good with that, now we're ready to get our chi-squared value. We're gonna hit stat, slide over to test, and we're gonna scroll all the way down to chi-squared test. It's kind of down on the list here. Option zero, chi-squared test, you'll see it there. Hit enter, and of course, it's gonna ask you where the observed values and where the expected values, and that's where we input the matrix. Now, it automatically defaults to using matrix A for the observed and B for the expected, but if you did change those for some reason, you'd have to hit second matrix, and then don't go to edit, just grab the name, so we'd say matrix A, just hit enter, and it'll bring matrix A in there, but of course, I already had matrix A there. So again, just making sure that A is where your observes were and B is where your expecteds were. And that's really it. That's all you have to do is let the calculator know those values. It will do everything else for you. Boom, there it is. There's the 12.594, my chi-squared. Now you might be like, well, that's a little bit different than the chi-squared you got. Yeah, I realize that. But remember, the calculator doesn't do any rounding. I probably did a little bit of rounding all this math. Calculator does none. It also gives you the p-value of 0.0134 that we're going to use to make our conclusion. And it also gives you the degrees of freedom, which we should be able to do that pretty easily. It's just categories minus one on the left-hand side, high school, middle school, college, three categories, minus one is two. Three categories for social media, minus one is two, and then you multiply those together, two times two is where we got that four from. Now, if we go back to the original question, they did ask us to use a, a um, confidence, or excuse me, a significance level of 1%. So now, as long as we have that p-value, we're ready to go and make our conclusion. Since my p-value of 0.0135 is greater than zero, I failed to reject the null hypothesis. There is not enough statistically significant evidence to suggest that there is a difference in the distribution of social media preferences across the three populations of middle school students, high school students, and college students. It appears that there is no major difference of social media preferences across the populations. Now, at the end of the day, I really don't know. I mean, it was super close, obviously. It's 0.0135 is close. Oh, I have a typo there. It should be 0.013. I forgot to type that in. All right. But again, that's what you got to do. You make the conclusion. If we were using a 5% significance level, then we would probably reject the null. But again, the whole purpose of this video is really just to show you how the calculator could, could do all this heavy lifting for you, getting that chi-squared value and getting that p-value. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. And don't forget, if this was a test for independence, the null would be that there is no association. The alternative would be that there is an association. But how you use your calculator, putting in the expected values into matrix A, whoa, whoa, whoa observed values into matrix A, sorry about that, and expected values into matrix B is all the same. The c command used on the calculator is the same. It's just a matter of, you know, the problem dictating that it's a chi-squared test for independence versus this problem was a homogeneity test.